Howdy folks, hope you're all having a good one, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous with the Mighty Jungles, and we have finally made it to Colonia. Although, just for the sake of clearing up any possible confusion, Colonia is a system all the way out here. Um, but it's also the name, in general, for the area around that system. This tiny outpost of civilization, 22,000 light years away from the bubble. So when I say I've made it to Colonia, well technically I've made it to the tier system, and I'm about to dock at the Bolden's Enterprise Coriolis Starport, which is the first sign of civilization that I've seen in the last 22,000 light years. But we're not actually in the Colonia system itself, although we're only a couple of light years away. We'll get onto why this region of space has borrowed the name of one of the star systems contained within it. Uh, in a moment for now, I need to put this thing down and just enjoy the fact that we've made it uh, without blowing myself up along the way. Which is nice. So, um, let's see what I can get for some of this cartographic data that I gathered along the way, because I'm... I'm I'm down to the bones of my arse here. I spent a fortune outfitting this anaconda, and I've basically got enough money to be able to insure the ship every time I fly it. So I'm going to sell some of this cartographic data to get myself some seed money. And just this one page alone is worth four and a half million credits. I don't know how many pages I have. A lot. <laughs> um, yeah. Well, you know, you travel 22,000 light years, you see some shit. And that information is valuable. So, I'll, I'll sell the first page. Purely and simply because I just need some cash. And I'm going to save the rest for stations that I need to gain reputation with. Because it's a cheap and easy and extremely profitable way of advancing your reputation to Allied without doing any actual work. I mean... I have done the actual work. I've just travelled 22,000 light years to get here. And I may as well make that work for me. So let's check on messages and see what dumping that first page of data has done for me. Unsurprisingly, there's a couple of uh, messages there notifying me of increases in reputation with the faction controlling the Bolden's Enterprise station here. But there's also an invitation from the engineer, Etienne Dawn. And that's great because that's. The whole reason we're out here in the first place. Well, not just Etienne Dawn. There's another uh, three engineers out here. Marsha Hicks, Mel Brandon, and Petra... Uh, something Russian. <laughs> I can't remember her name. <laughs> but these are the guys that I'm going to need. Colonia Council. That faction right there. Um, you get the invitation to Mel Brandon from bigging yourself up with the Colonia Council. And they're not the controlling faction of this station, although I can run missions for them from this station. But it's going to be a lot easier to use all of that cartographic data to just find a station controlled by them and dump that data there. And that's a far, far more efficient way of increasing reputation with them so that I can get the invitation from Mel Brandon. Now, before we leave Bolden's Enterprise, uh, there is one thing that I wanted to show you which I thought you might find amusing. I'm in the Anaconda, and the Anaconda's a fine ship, but it's not necessarily going to be the best ship available for any of the jobs that I might want to do out here. I might want to use my third Alliance, for example, for some combat missions. And you may remember that it's possible for you to pay to have an existing ship ferried to your location, if it's not the ship that you happen to be controlling at the time, and you can absolutely do that out here too. Having one of your other ships ferried to your current location just takes a little bit of time and costs a little bit of money. So how much exactly is it going to cost to have one of my ships ferried all the way out here to the tier system, some distance away uh, from where those ships are all parked in the Shinra to Desra system, at 22,000 light years away? Well, let's head to the shipyard and take a look. So let's check out the ship transfer tab. And there are my existing ships, all parked in the Shinra to Desra system where I last left them. For a mere 114 million credits, I can have my third Alliance flown out here. For a mere 170 million credits, I can have my Python flown out here. And it will only take 61 hours or two and a half days. You know what? 
I think it'll probably just be a lot easier to buy a new ship out here and pay to have it outfitted than to go to the expense of ferrying any of my existing ships out to this location. Well anyway, uh, we're done here in Bolden's Enterprise. Uh, this was literally just my first pit stop on the way. And we're heading to the Colonia system itself, where hopefully I should be able to find a station uh, where the controlling faction is the Colonia Council, because these are the guys I need to impress in order to unlock access to the engineer, Mel Brandon. Mel Brandon, of course, being the guy who offers Grade 5 engineering upgrades on just about everything, but in particular, beam, pulse and burst lasers. Oh yes, Mel Brandon is the guy who makes the pew-pew. The story behind the reason why this entire area of space is known as Colonia, and not just the one star system that's actually called Colonia, is actually quite a good one. The story goes that some time between the years 3200 and 3300, the centuries-old cyborg bartender, going by the name of Jacques, formerly a member of the Federation Black Ops team, gained full ownership of the Peter's Base starport in the Fasisi system. After wandering space for over 40 years, Jacques returned to the core systems on February the 7th, 3301, and settled on a slightly more ambitious goal. On the 5th of May, 3302, Jacques sponsored a community goal in Elite to gather enough hydrogen fuel to attempt to jump to Beagle Point on the far side of the galaxy. Thanks to the efforts of Elite's players, the fuel drive concluded successfully on May the 12th, and Jacques announced that he would go ahead with the jump. Unfortunately, Jacques Station never arrived at Beagle Point. But the first good news came on June the 13th, when several outposts in inhabited space reported receiving fragmentary messages believed to have originated from Jacques Station. The messages were too broken to be able to determine their source location, but on June the 29th, the player, Commander Cly, stumbled across Jacques Station in the Eol Prow RSTD394 system while surveying the nearby nebula. Cly reported that the station was damaged and still afflicted by Thargoid sensor-related technical issues. Shortly after it had jumped, Jack Station's drive engines, navigation system and power distributor malfunctioned in hyperspace, and rather than continue pushing to Beagle Point and potentially tearing the station to bits, Jack dropped at the nearest safe system. When asked if he would make a second jump to Beagle Point, Jack replied, I don't think Jack Station will be jumping again anytime soon. The old girl wasn't really built for long distance travel, and the last leap put a lot of strain on the superstructure. I think I'm going to be in Eol Prow, whatever it's called, for the foreseeable future. Still, the view here is lovely, so it could be worse. Meanwhile, pilots began collecting meta-allies to repair the stranded station. By the 7th of July, 3302, Jack Station's services were partially restored. A member of the station's technical team announced that they would soon secure funds to complete a proper campaign to fully repair the station. The four-week-long campaign opened for players on July the 21st with requests for various different material goods, and after only two weeks, enough commodities were received to bring more services online, including refueling, restocking, ship repairs and outfitting. On the 10th of August, the campaign concluded early after all request quotas were filled thanks to the efforts of thousands of players, and Jacques confirmed that the remaining repairs to Jacques Station would be finished soon, and a shipyard would also be added. In the weeks and months afterwards, the station in the newly renamed Colonia system became the main hub for colonization efforts in the surrounding Colonia region. A number of infrastructure building and immigration promoting initiatives were launched by the Colonia Council faction in response to a growing desire among citizens of the core systems to establish a new center of civilization away from the constant squabbling between the Federation, the Empire and the Alliance. Jacques has no plans to leave Colonia and the station will remain a fixture in the region for the foreseeable future. So thanks to the efforts of the thousands upon thousands of players who did that 22,000 light year journey ferrying supplies from the core systems all the way out here to the Colonia system in order to repair Jack Station, and this is not Jack Station by the way, it's in this system, this is the Colonia system. Uh, this is a dockable megaship that goes by the name of the Dove Enigma. And the reason I'm stopping here first is because this ship is controlled by the Colonia Council, and they're a faction that I do need to curry favour with. But thanks to the thousands upon thousands of players doing the journey to Colonia, the name kind of stuck. And when expansion started after successfully 
um, repairing and expanding the services available at Jack Station in the Colonia system, the entire region just sort of grew into the name the Colonia region. And there's a lot of this sort of thing out here in Colonia. I mean, back in the bubble, you'd expect to be docking at starports rather than dockable megaships, but the things are a bit more rough and ready <laughs> out here in Colonia. And yes, this station or ship is controlled by the Colonia Council, so I'm going to refuel and repair and then head straight to the Universal Cartographics Office and dump all of my remaining navigational data here to get myself allied with the Colonia Council as quickly as possible. This is going to be quite a lengthy process because it takes some time for each page of data to fully load. Uh, so I'm not going to make you sit here and watch the whole thing happen. Suffice to say that I have dumped more than enough navigational data here to make myself best buds with the Colonia Council. And I've also made a fair amount of cash out of it. When I arrived here, I was right in the bones of my arse, down to my last 5 million credits. And after dumping all of this data, I have a reasonably healthy bank balance of 50 million credits again. Checking more messages, there's the reputation changes with the Colonia Council. I'm now allied with them. But no invitation from Mel Brandon. Hmm. I know you get access to Mel Brandon through the Colonia Council, and that's why I'm raising my reputation with them, but no direct message yet? Aha, there it is. Engineer invitation contract. Deliver data to Whirling Station in the Ogmar system. Reward? Mel Brandon. That's it. Now, I'm not in any particular rush to get this done. I do want to see the sights and sounds of the Colonia system while I'm here before I jump out to Ogmar to deliver this data. And there are some very intriguing sounding points of interest scattered around this system, like this. Notable stellar phenomena. What the hell's that? I was expecting to be disappointed, because often you'll see these points of interest, you'll fly out there and there'll just be a navigation boy with some text. Well, there is a navigation boy, and it does have some text. Um, but, wow. What the hell is that? Well, it's obviously notable stellar phenomenon jingles. <laughs> well, yeah, but what is it? Is it dangerous? <laughs> Have I found aliens? Because, you know, I'm just saying, I was a big fan of Babylon 5 back in the day, and those spiky things look, well, they kind of look like the shadows. <laughs> Am I going to die if I investigate? Well, you wouldn't think so. I mean, they wouldn't put a tourist beacon out here if it was dangerous, would they? Would they? Well, there's only one way of finding out. There are a couple of these really weird points of interest out here in Colonia, and if you do make the journey out here, you owe it to yourself to at least check them out. Or, you know, don't, and just watch a YouTube video of somebody else checking them out for you. At the time of doing this, I was actually quite nervous, because I had no idea what it was that I was looking at. There it is, biological and geological discovery made. This, apparently, is a Crocium Lagrange cloud. Okay, I know what Lagrange point is. It's a point of stability between uh, two gravitational forces, where they kind of cancel each other out, but I don't know what Crocium is, and I'm not sure about the whole cloud thing, either. But I've found one. Okay, so that explains the cloud, sort of. But what about these spiky bits in it? They're big, whatever they are. Anything on the scanner? Prasinum metallic crystals. Well, I'm none the wiser. <laughs> I have no idea what that means. But apparently you can scan them with a ship's composition scanner. So, let's go ahead and do that. There we go. Um, I don't think I actually have the composition scanner assigned to a fire group, so we're going to have to go ahead and fix that. That'll do. Just get it lined up. Fire up the scanner. And, bingo! Another discovery mate. Prasin and metallic crystals. Let's open the codex and see exactly what the hell this is. 
Crystalline structures are noted for the metallic luster of their outer surface. Well, again, I'm, I'm none the wiser. <laughs> They're metal crystals. Don't know what they're doing out here. Don't know what caused them. Um, but there's all kinds of stuff out here to be discovered. This place is a veritable explorer's paradise with the reported locations of all kinds of weird shit. Uh, just waiting for you to go and check them out. I'm just going to enjoy the view here for a bit, though, because, I mean, it's weird. But it is very, very pretty. And it's not even the only source of weird shit to see in the Colonia system itself. There's another notable stellar phenomena, this time a rubium crystal Lagrange cloud. D don't ask, I don't know. <laughs> it's a space thing. In space. That's what it is. Well, this is all very nice, but it's not getting me any closer to my hot date with Mel Brand, and I need to deliver some data to Whirling Station in the Ogmar system, uh, which is a short jump away from Colonia. It's not too far at all. And it was on arrival here that I saw something else that I'd never seen before in Elite Dangerous. Whirling Station is a Coriolis starport, as you can see by the indicator on the instrument panel, but it's not a Coriolis station like any one I've ever seen before. My god, it's got arms! What is it, some kind of giant spaceship-eating robot? It's not that you don't get stations like this back in the bubble. You do, but they're incredibly rare. And this is the first time I've ever clapped eyes on one had to come all the way out to Colonia to see it. I'm not really sure what the purpose of those arms are. All the pods at the end. I suspect that they must be for doing something that requires higher than normal spin gravity. But I'm, I'm only guessing. I have absolutely no idea. And they are a bit of a navigational hazard if you're approaching the station from behind. Hopefully, the docking computer is going to take that into consideration. <laughs> because that could be really embarrassing. Although we're on the correct side. So there's no reason for the docking computer to take me around the station. Anyway, we're here to hand in a data delivery mission to unlock access to the engineer Mel Brandon. And it kind of is going to do that, but it also kind of isn't, because it turns out that even after you've completed this stage of the process, Mel Brandon still has one other hoop that he wants you to jump through. Mel Brandon's a bit pissed off with a faction out here in the Colonia region, known as the Nameless. And he wants you to provide him with 100,000 credits worth of bounty vouchers, uh, gained by dispatching nameless pirates. So that means I'm going to have to strap some weapons to the old anaconda, or sell the anaconda and buy a ship that's slightly better for combat. Now, back in the day, that would have presented a significant challenge, uh, because the kind of ship upgrades and ships that were available for sale out here in Colonia were not the best. Thankfully, those days are long gone, and a wide range of ships and ship upgrades are available at most stations in the Colonia region. It used to be the case that you'd arrive out here in Colonia, you'd think, right, I'll buy myself a ship, and the best ship available would be an Asp Explorer. And you think, well, whatever, it'll do. And then you go to upfit it, and the nearest source of A-rated equipment modules was 22,000 light years away, back in the bubble. Well, with the investment and expansion, in the Colonia region over the course of the last couple of years, uh, pretty much everything is available out here. The only real immediate problem I have right now is that I'm required to go out and hunt down bad guys for Mel Brandon so that he will upgrade my lasers. But Mel, I kind of need upgraded lasers in order to successfully go out and hunt down the bad guys that you want me to hunt down in order to provide access to your laser upgrades. Yeah, you can see where this is going, can't you? Unfortunately, Mel doesn't believe in down payments. <laughs> so I'm just going to have to do the best I can with what's available. And that is all going to be coming up in the next episode. I hope you've enjoyed this introduction to the Colonia region and the Colonia system in particular. And as always, take care, stay safe, and I'll catch you next time.